Today, I'm going to analyze a contingent purchase agreement along with a third-party inspection report on an eight-unit apartment building that one of my clients has gone under contract for. Jared, this is your video. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, holding wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Hey, real estate investors. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I am your host, James Wise. Behind the scenes, we've got my man Tommy bringing all the action to you. Uh, Jared, my guy Jared. Uh, you have gone under contract on an eight-unit apartment building. You went out, you utilized a buyer's agent. Uh, funny story, that buyer's agent used to actually work here at Holton Wise. So the good thing for you is I taught him everything he knows. The bad thing for you is I didn't teach him everything I know, but that's why you're here, of course. The seller, I actually am familiar with him as well. I have actually, you see the seller, he is actually an agent himself, agent investor. He's also got a brother who's an agent investor out here in the Cleveland market. And I've worked with both him and his brother to sell rental properties before. So I am uh, fairly familiar with everybody you've got going on in this deal. So without further ado, let's let's dive into this deal. This is the property. 4428 Turney Road, Cleveland, Ohio, 44105. Let's pull the pictures up a little bit bigger. Tom, how's the sizing on those pictures? It's good. All right, so let's pop through these. Now, this is a, a newer build for an apartment building, which is nice. I like the fact that this is newer. This is like a 1950s type build, as opposed to a lot of the builds you'll see here in the Cleveland market that are older, like 1920s. All right. There's the parking lot. By the way, don't get uh, all excited with the bends, right? Don't let this bends excite you. That ain't one of the tenants' bends. That is uh, the seller's bends. Again, I know the seller, so I know for a fact that's his car. Uh, so don't think that you're you're renting to tenants that uh, are driving a bends, because tenants that are driving bends don't don't live in this apartment building. We'll get to that a little bit later, though. All right, just cruising around here. Notice they got security cameras. That is a nice feature, especially in a neighborhood like that. Okay. Another exterior shot. All right. All the separate gas meters. Okay, this is an eight-unit apartment building. You're going to see nine there because you've got eight for each of the individual units and then one for the common area. There's all of your electric meters. Same thing. You've got nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down here for the apartments. And then you're going to have one for the common area, mailboxes, more security, interior shot of a tenant's living room. Pretty nice looking living room. This kitchen definitely dated. Um, when it comes time to turn this unit over, I would imagine you'd want to spend some money upgrading this kitchen. These are the original metal cabinets. The thing uh, with these original metal cabinets that's kind of a pain in the ass is they like kind of start to rust and, and they don't like open and close very well. Um, so when you have these, they're just so old. The best move is to just completely tear them out. And then for you know, a low-income apartment like this, you're going to want to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or some type of supplier that's you know similar to the Home Depot or Lowe's. And you're just going to want to get, you know, stock cabinets with a stock countertop. I wouldn't recommend going granite uh, in an apartment like this. I would say, you know, a Formica type product uh, is what you're going to want to use. That floor, that's a super dated floor. The units are all pretty small. They're all uh, one bedroom units. They're all pretty tiny. So like when this turns over, and there's a couple you were worried about. You were worried about uh, unit number 104 and 201, right? You're worried about the turnover costs. 
If you have a, a small apartment like this, this is what you're going to have to do at turnover. You're going to have to repaint all the walls. Don't think you're going to get away with not repainting them. Even like if stuff looks nice, like going back, like this this unit, right? This looks like a super nice unit. Uh, like right now, this looks clean. This looks nice. But what you've got to understand is when this is actually empty, even though this looks so nice, this is not going to be move-in ready right what do we have here we have a couch that's brushed up against the wall when you move out when these folks move out you're going to pull this couch away and what you're going to see you're probably going to see like rub marks all over the wall from the couch you got a photograph right there i'm sure that's not the only photograph that is hanging up in these folks apartments so you're going to have holes there and you know here's the thing you don't know if they actually you know hit the nail the the right time like the first time, right? I'm sure if you pull these pictures up, you're probably going to see like several holes, you know, because folks aren't getting it even and all that jazz. Another thing too, look, you got the couches and then you got all these like rugs and stuff, right? Those are, you know, traffic rugs, basically. I, I'm assuming that's what that is. Like, you know, they're trying to keep their carpet clean. Uh, that's where they walk the majority of the time. But I guarantee you when you pull up these carpets and these little rugs and all the furniture, you know, this is light carpet right this is a super light color you're going to see a lot of discoloration so you're probably going to need uh to totally replace the carpet so you're going to be painting all the walls patching the tiny holes replacing all the carpet and doing a full kitchen remodel small unit uh, but because of that kitchen remodel you're going to look to spend about ten thousand dollars so for one of your questions for me you asked me the cost on unit 104 and 201 so you, you want to pencil in twenty thousand dollars because i'm assuming based on the fact that you highlighted both of those to me i'm assuming both of those are units that have these old kitchens now uh so that's i factored in 10 g's for each unit you got to understand though like 65% of that is because you're doing the kitchen. So once you do the kitchen, you don't have to worry about it again. You're going to get those new cabinets in there. You know, just the wood, uh, tradition. you know, just the wood off the shelf stuff from Home Depot Lowe's. You're going to put in just like a newer vinyl floor. And you're not going to really have to mess with it uh, very much uh, at, at, you know, future turnovers. So don't think that like every time you do this, you're going to have to spend $10,000. Like 65, 70% of that is going to be for the kitchen. All right, so not not a super big deal, but you do have two of those coming up. All right, <clears throat> uh, decent looking bathroom. You know, nothing much here, just a bedroom. Okay, furnace that is a little bit older of a furnace. We'll get into the furnaces a little bit later when we go over your inspection report. Like this right here, by the way, this is essentially uh, like a modernized low income kitchen. Like the floor, the floor is a little dated. That's probably like a ten year old floor, but more or less like the cabinets, like something that's going to look like that is what we're gonna we're gonna want to see here. Unfortunately, this fridge, this is not a full size fridge. That is uh, an apartment, like a teeny tiny apartment size fridge so that just shows you how small some of these units are which is going to be good for the cost uh but it's going to be bad for the amount of money and rent you can get all right just another bedroom no biggie there another furnace we'll get into the furnaces when i go over your inspection report uh here is that security system so if you're actually on site uh or your manager can access those uh you know that footage if you want to pay for uh, internet access to the building, you spend about 100 bucks a month, you could have all that saved. Maybe that's going to be a nice feature for you. The tenants are definitely going to like it, especially in a neighborhood like this. Two hot water tanks. This appears to be uh, a 40-gallon one. This is probably a 100-gallon one. Based on just looking at these bad boys, just so you know, they're both, uh, I would guesstimate, at least 10 years old. You're going to get about 15 years on hot water tanks. So you're looking at about a thousand dollars for that 40 gallon tank and uh probably double or a little bit more on the 100 gallon i can't remember what we pay for the 100 gallons off the top of my head uh but i i think it's around double in the show notes below i'll talk with my my team i'll talk with the the head of our construction department and i'll get you a more accurate price uh, and i'll put that in the show notes below moving on Washer dryer, coin operated. Just so you know, coin operated uh, laundry. A lot of people think that this is like a 
great way to make a ton of money. Uh, it's really not, okay? When you're in these low-income areas, we, you know, we've experienced this like a million times. People will go in, and they will break in, and they will just beat the ever-living fuck out of these things. Like, this is the coin box. These are not necessarily that hard to break off, and you'll get fucking drug addicts and junkies and shit. They will come in there, and they'll break the shit out of those. And these, these units here, okay... They're older, um, and there's probably a limit to how much you could actually charge. So I would assume the price is probably too low. To actually try to make any money off a of laundry, you got to be, like, charging at least 4 bucks um, for a wash, right? And then what you want to do, you want to actually make the dry cheaper. Like, 4 bucks for the wash and then 2 bucks for the dry uh, is a pretty good way to go about it. If you make the dry the same as the wash, people will just opt to air dry their clothes. Um, and then you won't get any, uh, you know, you won't get anybody, you know, paying to dry the stuff in your dryer. Uh, but just because you don't necessarily make any money off of the laundry, uh, there, there, it's a pain in the ass, but you can't necessarily eliminate it because the tenants, right, it does keep your turnover lower. Because think about it, right, if you're living somewhere, you don't want to have to drive to a laundromat just to do your laundry, right? You'd like to be able to do it in the building. But I don't want you to see see that laundry and think that it's going to be this huge, huge money maker. It is one of the biggest pains in the ass as a property management company. Like we have a bunch of these in our apartments, but what we found the best thing to do is move to the coinless ones, right? So tenants uh, can use like a card system and you could secure the actual, uh, the actual <clears throat> like thing that takes the money a little bit better because dude, people break into these and just beat the fuck out of these and it just causes so much problems and then especially if you get the old ones it doesn't even really keep up with the profitability of the cost of water because here in the cleveland market as i'm sure you probably know water's been going up uh way 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 up in the last few years here uh one more thing about the laundry though about people breaking in um a benefit to this building is that security system like i cannot stress enough you know how nice of a feature that probably is given the quality of the neighborhood you're in here because this is definitely a high risk neighborhood uh which by the way if you like my shirt i love evictions and you better like my shirt because if you're gonna buy a property in this neighborhood you better learn to love evictions because you're probably gonna be doing a lot of them uh this is uh definitely an f class neighborhood which is actually my biggest concern with the building i even before well before i get into that l let me go over some more questions you had about your inspection report let me knock those out and then we will get into the neighborhood all right so you kind of gave me a punch list of things you were worried about now one of them, uh, the old yellow stove in unit 201. That's not that big of a deal. You can get a new stove, five, six hundred bucks, right? That, that's not a big deal. So six hundred bucks or so. Let's just call it. Let's call it six hundred. No big deal. Uh, repair water leak uh, slash continuous toilet. That's no big deal. You spend about three hundred bucks, get a plumber in there. They'll replace the toilet, right? You don't want to mess with trying to like fix the insides of the toilet. Just pull the thing out. And just replace it. Do it right. You know, the newer toilets, they use less water. You don't want to mess around with all the stuff. And when he actually pulls it out, just so you know, like, there could be leaking under there. You may have to replace the subfloor. If you end up having to replace the subfloor, that's going to be a few thousand dollar job. But if it's just the toilet, just bite the bill, just bite the bullet, get a new toilet. About 300 bucks. No biggie. Um, your inspector noted that not all of the COs and smoke detectors are working. Those are going to cost you if you want to have a, a pro, you know, if you want to do it yourself. Um, obviously, they're a lot cheaper. But if you want to have a property manager do those on your behalf, you're going to be spending about 25 bucks per new CO or smoke they put up. And you got two floors here, so you're going to need them um, in the hallways of both floors, right by the entrance and the exit. And then these are tiny units, so you're only going to need two to three in each of the units. Uh, so you'll do the math on how many you need, right? They're going to be roughly 25 bucks. No big deal there. Uh, the fire extinguishers, you have to have fire extinguishers at the exit and the entrance when you have apartment buildings. Uh, there are fire extinguisher companies that will come out 
and they will test these, certify them, replace them if uh, if they're past their useful life. That's pretty cheap, a few hundred bucks, so nothing major. Now, a big cost that you're going to incur is going to be your furnaces. So let's actually pull up your inspector's report, which you did give to me. Okay, so we've got nine furnaces, right? Because we have eight units, and then we have the common. Now, each of your furnaces, okay, were built between 1983 and then in 1990, right? You have some that were built in 83, some that were put in in 89, and then some that were put in 1990. Now, the average lifespan of a furnace, according to your inspector, is 20 years, and all of them have exceeded that, right? The newest is 1990. It's 2019 right now, so that's 29 years. I always tell folks that the average lifespan of a furnace is approximately 30 years. So he's shortening it here. He's saying 20. Uh, but I would say my guesstimate of 30 is a lot more accurate considering the, the newest ones you've got are 29 years old. And then you've got one that is 30 years old. And then you've got another one that's 36 years old. So approximately 30 years. What that means, given the age of all of your furnaces is that you are coming up on replacement for all of these, right? You got nine of them. The cost to replace your furnace is going to be approximately $3,000. 3,000 times nine, that is $27,000. Okay, $27,000. Now, this does not mean... You spend $27,000 right now here today. You go in and just replace all nine of them. That would be insane. It doesn't make any sense. What this means, because the average, the average lifespan is approximately 30 years. You got some that are in there for 36. They're still kicking. You don't want to, like, proactively go in and replace any of these. Just let them continue to run. If they work, they work. That's great. But when your tenant complains of a no heat or they have an issue with the furnace, you don't want to have your HVAC guys in there spending five, six, seven hundred dollars replacing parts, right? These are old, outdated, past their useful life systems. So what you want to do, ride them out while they work. As soon as one goes down, you're going to want to spend three thousand dollars to get it replaced. Then you don't really have to worry about it. That should be your plan for all of them. So within the next, you know, foreseeable future, I can't tell you exactly how long every one of these is going to last, but you're on borrowed time with pretty much all of them. Uh, so note that it's it's very plausible in the next, you know, four, five, six, seven years, you're going to spend $27,000 on your furnaces. And then uh, the last thing you are worried about is masonry work outside uh, to repair and um, seal the brick, right? That's definitely going to be uh, a several thousand dollar job. That's not going to be a very cheap job, but you're going to have to actually get a mason out there to bid that. Uh, that isn't something I can bid for you here right now, just looking at the photos, but that is going to be a few thousand dollars. So to answer your immediate questions on the property, just based on the furnaces and uh, the repair costs coming up for two of the units, that is $47,000 in the near future. And then, you know, all the other little stuff, you know, we could probably round that up to 50 k And then, of course, the tuck pointing, that'll be a few grand. So, you know, you're looking at fifty to $55,000 of capital expenses in the upcoming future. Now, <clears throat> things that definitely need to happen immediately, and you're correct, right? Um, the stove, yeah, you got to replace that, no big deal. You got to get rid of the water leak. Water leaks are terrible, no big deal. You got to, to get the proper amount of smoke detector, CO detectors working. Yeah, that's a non-negotiable, right? If you have a fire uh, and it comes to light that you didn't have the proper amount of fire detectors, man, your you're ass getting sued. Uh, you don't want to be that guy for sure. Same thing with the fire extinguishers. The furnaces, that's not an immediate need um, because they're working. Now, one of them, it appears one of them wasn't working from your inspection report, I believe. Uh, what? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Furnace, non-functioning. So unit 104 and unit 103. I don't know if unit 103 is non-functioning. 
um, because the gas was off, so your inspector couldn't text, uh, test that. But unit 104, so you're guaranteed. You have to spend. Don't don't worry about trying to fix that, man. Just spend three grand replacing that. And if it turns out unit 103 um, has issues, spend the three grand replacing that. So six grand immediately. But don't forget about the other 21,000 coming up. You don't need to handle that immediately, but that is coming up, right? So roughly 50 to 55 thousand dollars of reasonable CapEx expenditures coming up for you. Um, that is That was your immediate questions, but I, I really want to talk to you about the neighborhood, right? Like I said, I got the I Love Eviction shirt, which, by the way, if you want this shirt, and again, if, if, you, if you're interested in this neighborhood, you better be a guy that wants this shirt. You click the link in the, uh, the show notes below. You can pick up one of these or any of our other real estate shirts. This neighborhood, 44105. If you go to the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods, um, and for anybody watching your video, Jared, that doesn't know what that is, or even if you don't know what that is, Jared, uh, that is a comprehensive guide that I've put together. Um, if you go to HoltonWise.com, you can just go to the Tools and Resources section, and it's right here, the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. Note, I've also got one out for Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm currently working on one for Memphis, Tennessee, and Indianapolis, Indiana. So um, if you're interested in those markets, definitely take a look at the guides. But on the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods, okay, that is a comprehensive guide. Oop, we're on Bigger Pockets here. I actually host it through the Bigger Pockets website. Um, but that is a comprehensive guide. Uh, where I've graded all the neighborhoods in the Cleveland market based on risk to real estate investors. You know, risk for not payment of rent, tenants breaking stuff, such as, you know, breaking the, you know, beating the shit out of your laundry equipment and, and stealing the money. Cleveland, 44105, that is an F class neighborhood. Okay, that is F, F class neighborhood. Now, Sometimes people get confused by this because there are two suburbs, and one of them is super important, Garfield Heights. Garfield Heights has three zip codes, 44137, 44125, and 44105. The 44105 portion of that zip code, I do not consider that to be a B class. I have rated 44137 and 44125 as a B when you get into 44105 in Garfield Heights, uh, that's probably, you know, that not probably. It's, it is the most risky, the worst part of Garfield Heights. And if you watch my other content, uh, even when I'm selling a property on the Investment Properties for Sale show, you will see me say that. Uh, so the quality of the neighborhood goes down as you get into Cleveland 44105. I would say Garfield Heights 44105 is probably a C-class neighborhood. And then we have Newburgh Heights, which is also 44105. I consider that to be a C-class neighborhood. But what you've got here, you've got Cleveland 44105. That is what I consider to be an F-class neighborhood. So usually in the show at this point, we go ahead and we break down the numbers in a line-by-line -line fashion. That's what I do here on the MLS Search and Analysis Show. But I, I'm not going to do that for you because I can't. I really can't break down the numbers because what I do is I, I go over your fixed expenses, like your taxes, your insurance, things of that nature. But then I also go over your variable expenses, uh, which is going to be repairs, maintenance, non-payment of rent, fixing things up after evictions, things of that nature. When you are purchasing an F class property there's just too many unknowns i can't i can't stand up here on my show and give you reasonable estimates because properties in these neighborhoods are, are just so unpredictable they're so tough they're so difficult uh to narrow down I, I really can't do that so you need to understand going into this property you are buying a super high risk investment because it's a super uh, high-risk neighborhood. Now, it is very close to the border of Garfield Heights, okay? Very close to the border. If you were in Garfield Heights proper, I would say, hey, uh, it's definitely something to look at. The risk would be lower because you get Garfield Heights um, city services, and, you know, there's not as much of a stigma living in that part of Garfield Heights. But the thing is, with the 44105 section of Garfield Heights, it's not like Garfield Heights is here at a B class, and then Cleveland is here, and it just drops off a cliff. You know, once you get into 44105 in Garfield Heights, it's like a slow decline, and then you pass that border, and it just continues to decline as we get into your property. 
Um, so very, very tough uh, for you to anticipate the types of returns you're going to get because the tenant base is going to be extremely unpredictable. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go to a quick commercial break so you guys can hear a word from the sponsor of today's show. And then when we come back, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that neighborhood, pricing in that neighborhood, and we're going to go over your purchase agreement. Because just because a property is in a high-risk neighborhood does not necessarily mean I'm going to deny the deal telling you you can't buy it. It's just it's a risk versus reward thing. So that's why we're going to go over your purchase agreement to make sure that the price you have this under contract uh, for is reasonable given the risk factor of the neighborhood and the fact that you're going to spend fifty to fifty five thousand dollars on capex coming up based in indianapolis indiana fs houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches fs houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. Holt & Wise has a worldwide audience of real estate investors. If you are a lender, home inspector, or anyone else with a real estate related business who would like to increase your sales and exposure with an ad in one of our videos, go to HoltonWise.com today. All right, Jared, welcome back. We're about to get into your contract now and really go over your purchase price. But really quick, for everyone else that's watching Jared's video, just want to make this clear. Jared purchased an MLS analysis product from me. If you would like to do the same, if you found a deal that you're interested in but you want my expert opinion as an investor, go to holdwise.com, click on the property search tab. First, you can click on the investment properties for sale show. That are all, those are all the properties that I am selling. I'm the number one realtor in Cleveland in regards to rental property. But you can also click the MLS search and analysis show, and you could choose any of our analysis type products. They range in price based on what you'd like my team to do. We are a la carte here at Holton Wise. If you want me to actually send my film crew into the property and give you a full video tour of the property, we can do that for you. If you just want me to analyze everything from my desk like I'm doing for my guy Jared, I can do that for you. If you just want to give me your criteria of what you're looking for as an investor and you want me to go out and search the MLS for you, I can also do that for you and of course in addition guys there is the investment properties for sale show make sure you are not only subscribed here on youtube but you're also subscribed to our mailing list because every single day at one o'clock eastern standard time we email out the properties that we are selling here at holton wise and we have property management title insurance we have everything you need construction uh, we even have lenders, so if you need lenders, send my team an email, sales at holtonwise.com. We've got it all for you guys, um, but you don't have to buy from us. You can buy from any other source like Jared's doing here because, guys, there's 5,000 other realtors in Cleveland. We are the number one seller of rental properties in Cleveland, but 5,000 other people, that's a lot of deals. I don't want you to miss out on those. And then that also brings me to my last point right down here at the bottom, folks. Uh, even before you get a, a search and analysis product, you know, before you spend a few hundred bucks, just spend $29.99, get yourself a direct feed to all of the Cleveland deals. This is my broker access. So when one of these good deals pops up on the open market, you will know the moment that I know. You're going to know before Zillow. You're going to know before Trulia. And what I do I break it down for you based on the type of property you're looking for. So whether you're an investor who wants singles, uh, small multi, which is two to four units, or you want apartment buildings. What we have here, this is an apartment building. I break it down like that, and then I also break it down per the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods based on risk factors, A, B, C, D, and F neighborhoods. Because the idea behind getting one of these feeds is prior to, to you spending several hundred dollars or god forbid several hundred thousand dollars buying an investment 
you need to know if that investment's risk level matches your risk tolerance. So you get the deals faster and they're pre-sorted and organized for you. So guys, definitely pick up one of the direct MLS feeds. Now, for Jared's particular property, okay? Jared, uh, <clears throat> I was going through your contract. The contract, as far as it being written up, written up fine. Like I said, the seller, I'm familiar with how he does business. He's, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's fine. Uh, the buyer's agent uh, that you've hired, he knows what he's doing. He's fine. Again, I taught him everything he knows. But remember, I didn't teach him everything I know, and that's why you purchased this video analysis. Uh, but as far as like what he did on your contract, it all it all looks good. It's all fine. The big thing that I have the issue with, and that comes into not teaching him everything I know, is the valuation, dude. I, I, like we went over your inspection report and, and all that jazz. Based on the fact you got a, you know, you got fifty thousand dollars of capex coming up, which isn't the biggest deal killer here, okay? Because, dude. These apartment buildings, you're never going to buy an apartment building here in Cleveland that's, like, perfect. At no point in time can you go out and buy something and it's just like, the inspector's like, yep, everything's perfect, everything's great, right? These are, like, constantly moving things, man. It's like your grass, right? You don't just cut your grass once and then that's it. You're just like, I cut the grass, I'm done, we're good now forever. No, you got to cut the grass every single week, right? These apartment buildings are always going to have issues, right? That's why when we run the numbers on these, right? You could be bringing in, let's say, $10,000 a month. And on a typical multifamily deal of, of, of this nature, like this type in, of size, right? Like one bedroom apartments. If you're bringing in $10,000 a month, typically when I run the numbers uh, in a reasonable neighborhood, right? Like, you know, C-class neighborhoods, B-class neighborhoods, uh, a little more high risk when you get to D. Uh, so the risk factor and the imp unpredictability is higher, but, you know, a little bit of D, right? You're, you're going to spend approximately half of that rent just maintaining the building. And that's handling things like uh, that CapEx that's coming up, right? You don't have to just take the money out of your pocket and spend it immediately. You're spending half of the rents on things like your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance, you know, your CapEx just operating the building. But I, we can't really run numbers when it's in an area like this though because it's so unpredictable man like tenants in these f-class neighborhoods are just so unpredictable and don't believe any of that hype if somebody tells you like if you have a really really nice building in an f-class neighborhood or if you just screen really really well you're gonna get these amazing like one-off tenants that's not how it works man when folks uh are of a higher caliber type tenant they're going to move to a higher caliber neighborhood. That's that's just how life works. I don't make the rules. That's just how it is. So with, with all that said, you're under contract on this deal for $250,100. Because of that, Jared, I have to, James Wise, deny <clears throat> this deal for you. I do not think that it would make any sense for you to move forward with this particular deal at this particular price. That is a price per unit, $250,100 divided by eight. That is a price per unit of $31,262 a unit. Not for a neighborhood like this, bro. Not for a neighborhood like this. There is no scenario uh, where you need to pay $31,262 per unit to be in an F-class neighborhood here in Cleveland. There are better neighborhoods where you can get properties for a similar price per unit. And to back that up, I did pull the comps. Now, here's the deal with comps. When you're running comps, okay, in an urban area, that's like a city, right? Not a area with like fucking farms and shit, right? An urban area. I like to do quarter mile comps, okay, for the last six months. Now, if there's not a lot of sales, that is a huge indicator that the neighborhood is stressed. Super blighted, super ghetto t neighborhoods, right? They have less sales because there's less of a demand for people to go in and purchase those properties. Uh, so what I had to do here is to give you a reasonable amount of data. I had to go back three years. Normally, I like to go quarter mile, six months. What I had to do here... I took the entire city of Cleveland within the zip code 44105. All of Cleveland in the zip code of Cleveland, 44105, and I went back three years, and I was only able to find five deals for you. Let's take a look at these deeper. 
Now the first one that I have pulled up for you. 11722 Union Avenue, Cleveland, 44105. This bad boy sold 524 2018 for $34,000. And this is a six unit building. Let's read it. Handyman Special. This two story building has six units, including two retail stores in the front and four apartments in the back. Apartments are big. Large parking lot is next to the building and included in the sale. Needs interior repair. It is great for people who have vision. Fix it up. All six units will generate awesome income and appreciation. Great potential. Maybe, maybe not, but six unit, 34000 Next of our five, 11727-29 miles, Cleveland, 44105. This thing sold. 221 2017 for $45,000. Let's see what the agent said on that. Excellent investment opportunity. This is a six unit apartment converted into five living units. Presently, two units are occupied by family members and three units are vacant. The building has been well maintained glass block, basement windows, newer boiler, excellent location, elementary school directly across the street. Moving on. 6700 Seabert Ave, Cleveland, Ohio, 44105. This sold 12-7-2016 for $50,000. Brick, nine-unit apartment building, six one-bedroom, three two-bedroom, located close to I-77 off Fleet in the Slavic Village area, just south of downtown Cleveland. Each unit has separate electric and gas, includes two-car garage. Next. 5504 Linton Avenue, Cleveland, 44105. This one sold for 72000 on 7119. The agent had stated, Owner recently inherited this property. County land use is apartment. It is vinyl sided and has four units, two two-bedroom units and two one-bedroom units. There is four gas and electric meters, four furnaces and two hot water tanks. Storage lockers in the full basement and open storage in the full attic. The property was owner-occupied for many years and is well-maintained and comes with a residential vacant lot. Many trees and plants found on the fenced vacant lot. Two 40 by 125 foot lots. Seller is selling in as-is condition. And the last one, which is the closest comp on a price-per-unit basis to you, this one sold in... July of 2019, 7-19-2019, it sold for 147500 that is 63196321, Lansing Ave, Cleveland, Ohio, 44105. The agent had said in the listing, solid brick, five-unit building in South Broadway neighborhood, close to Slavic Village and I-77, currently has four units occupied with full leases, relatively new and clean updates has been professionally managed for the past six years let's just take a look at the photos uh the photos are actually pretty nice it's pretty pretty nice inside now one thing to note too uh this building is definitely older than the building you are looking into buying this is probably like a 19 you know turn of the century 1915 1920 1930s type building yours is built in the 50s or the 60s uh but let's see the inside okay the units pretty well renovated this is like a nice uh, this is what you'd want a kitchen to look like in a low-income apartment. You know, they got some uh, vinyl wood flooring. That's decent. Uh, one thing to note here, um, I, I personally, by the way, I think the the buyer of this apartment building, I think they overpaid, dude. I, I don't think they uh, did a good job on the buy. Now, the renovation here, like, it looks pretty nice, okay? But if you actually look deeper, dude, there's some big problems with this this unit, right? Um, first of all, they carpet it. I don't necessarily like to carpet these. I like to go with a vinyl flooring uh, throughout the whole thing or a wood flooring if there is hard woods under there because you're going to have a lot of turnovers in, in buildings like this. Okay, This is a low-income area. You're going to have a shit ton of turnovers. That's just part of the game. That's another reason we couldn't really break down all of the numbers for you because it's an F-class neighborhood. It is so unpredictable. Your tenant base is so transient has so many income problems credit problems uh like if you are someone who's making a good income you have great credit you can afford a nice apartment you don't typically move to an f-class neighborhood that's just not how this works uh so because of all that carpet is not ideal 
because that's just going to increase your turnover cost every single time. So I don't like that. I do like the color choice, right? We typically at Holton Wise, we do an agreeable gray on the walls, which I don't know if that is exactly the color, but it's similar. And then we paint all the trim white. So I like that. But here is a extreme red flag that I do not like. You see this? Let's pull that even bigger, okay? That is a drop ceiling, all right? You should not see a drop ceiling anywhere other than a basement. What having a drop ceiling in an above ground unit means to me is at some point there was some serious water damage, whether it be the unit above it, whether it be coming from the roof, and instead of actually fixing it the right way, the seller chose to do a half-assed easy way out, and instead of fixing everything the correct way, they tried to cover it up. So if you are trying to buy a property and you see a drop ceiling, that is an extreme red flag. Proceed with caution. Now, that's enough of the comps, and uh, I think that last buyer, like I said, that that one was like, what, probably like 29000 30000 a unit, so a little bit less than what you're under contract for here. Uh, the building itself, right, probably less nice than your building, but I think that guy way overpaid. I think he would have definitely benefited uh, from purchasing an analysis product from me. I had nothing to do with that sale, so he definitely did not. I think if he did, I would have denied that deal as well. So over the last three years, three years, every single apartment building in Cleveland, 44105, where your property is located that sold, only five, only five have sold in those three years, right? So that is an average of less than two sales per year, okay? And four of those five sold for dramatically lower than what the one um, you're looking to buy is priced at what you're contracted at. So because of all that, Jared, I, I think you got to deny this deal. I, I think you would be way, way overpaying. I see also on your contract that uh, you are getting a mortgage. You're planning on putting down 20% and the bank, you're planning on having your lender issue you a loan for the other 80%. I, I see no scenario where this is going to appraise. I, I just don't even think it's possible. I would anticipate if you were going to buy this building, you would have to put down anywhere between 45 and 65 to maybe even 70% down to get it to go. Because I don't think it's going to appraise for anywhere near that. And I think you're overpaying by at least 50, if not 75, maybe even higher, 50 to 75 to possibly even higher. I, I think you're overpaying. So for all that, all that, my analysis for you, this deal, 100% James Wise denied. <clears throat> for the rest of you out there, if you're interested in investing in the Cleveland market, what you need to do first and foremost is smash that subscribe button so you can get content like this from Holton Wise TV all of the time. On top of that, I'm assuming if you're still here, you found a ton of value in what we are doing. So do me a salad and smash that like button so it tells YouTube's algorithm that you are finding the value and we will be higher in the search rankings. Everybody who's watched this video, if you would like me to give you a personalized analysis like this, again, you just go to HoltonWise.com. You can click on the property search tab and you want to go to the MLS search analysis show. You can get any type of analysis product like this or I can find you things. But before you do any of that, I think you want to be down here. Start off small before you give me a few hundred dollars to do a big personalized analysis for you. Let me send you the properties, give you my broker access so you get the access to the deals faster than anyone else and they're already pre-sorted. So you can match your risk tolerance with the type of neighborhood the properties are located in because if you're not willing to take the risk of buying an f-class property there is no reason that you should be sifting through f-class properties looking at prices you might be like oh the price and rent ratio this looks great uh but little do you know that uh an f-class property is not in your wheelhouse 
because if you are going to buy an F-Class property, again, you better click the link below and get your ass one of these I Love Eviction shirts because that is going to be part of your daily life. And if you do not believe me on just how bad or how many evictions you'll do when you get these rough, tough ghetto properties, uh, check out some of our other shows here on Holt Mice TV, namely the Tenants from Hell show. We show you the worst of the worst when it comes to uh, dealing with bad tenants. That's all I've got for all you guys today. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. Gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, holding wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Property management is a lot more than just placing tenants and collecting rent. Who you work with can be as or even more important than the properties themselves. With over 60 years of cumulative experience, the principles of Evergrow Property Management have one of the most tried and tested property management businesses in the Indianapolis, Indiana market. Armed with the latest technology and a full range of property management services, including property evaluations, tenant screening, rent collection, maintenance, legal compliance, and eviction services. Evergrow Property Management is the top property management choice of rental property owners, turnkey providers, and real estate agents in the Indianapolis, Indiana market. Visit evergrowpm.com for more information. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video, just like this one, to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.